Hello everyone, it is good evening for us, but whenever you decide to watch this, thank you for joining. We've got the Lazy Ghost and Alejandro, aka Beard here. Say hello, Beard. Hey, what's up guys? It's the Beard. Alright, uh. and we are, we got your week seven, no, week six power rankings. Uh, a little over ambitious there. We got week seven coming to you next week by way of none other than the Blazing Squid and coach carlos and that will be after they play that week so that is a uh, good power rankings that we have up on the agenda so yeah for without further ado let's go ahead and jump into these matches um alejandro i know we already picked the battle of the week so no spoilers but uh tell me about some of the battles you enjoyed watching this week oh man where to begin uh let's see uh carlos and steven uh was pretty interesting um let's see here uh squid and uh squid and matt pretty pretty dynamic mm -hmm. um the chris jordan match was spicy yes it was uh, <laughs> yeah and, over, overall yeah really really good battles i i think like every week we've had just a lot of intense battles really good prep showing itself self off and uh, and because of that, because of all the battles that we have watched this season, we can bring you the power rankings for week six. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the 16 through 9 rankings. And uh, Beard, I will let you go ahead and start us off with what you think of the Kansas City Kingler at number 16, Coach Trigg. Oh, man, Coach Trigg. You know, got to love the guy. Uh, he's been uh, making some making some different trades and getting his his team together, but uh, you know just uh, just with this week, you know he's 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 been on a constant stream of getting smacked down by his opponents, and it's and it's rough. I get it. Like LDL's a different beast, and uh, you know I, I I really am rooting for him to 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 make a comeback from this. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, the way that his battle turned out with Anthony, uh, you know, it, it's a little sad. Yeah, tough battle. Muck, Alola Muck, uh, for those of you who did not watch the battle, was able to curse up, recycle, and just spam knockoff and poison jab and it picked up six kills so pretty amazing prep there by anthony that, i mean that that muck is going to give a lot of teams problems so uh yeah so we got coach trig at the number 16 spot plenty of season left to climb out of that and get into a playoff spot and we wish you the best of luck trig so next at the 15 spot we have the other one and five team here in ldl season seven the Chelsea Fell Stingers and Coach DJ. So I'll go ahead and start off with my analysis here before I kick it to the beard. I feel like DJ has been fighting and clawing this season. The 15 is really not indicative of the season that he has had because he's had a, a lot of really close matches and I, I think that he's he's really starting to tweak the roster. You know, only time will tell if it was a little too late with kind of the, 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 the power that is the top of his conference right now. Uh, four teams with at least four wins. It's going to be tough with the differential that he's at. Uh, but what do you think, Beard? Well, you know, after watching his match this past week and uh, going into a little discussion with the guy, uh, he's got a game plan uh, as far as uh, changing his team up. I'm a little scared to face him uh, in the upcoming weeks. But, like... You know, looking at his at his at his strategies and getting his his game back. Uh, you know, the Brandon match recently was a really close one. He, I felt like he almost had that. Um, but you know, I, I I really am rooting for DJ uh, to to make the comeback this season because uh, he's got a really threatening team and and definitely the skills. I mean, he's got the skills there to 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 pull it off and be up with the uh, rest of the the guys in the squad so yep only time will tell wish you the best of luck as well <laughs> uh for everybody on the uh the bottom eight list uh make your way up to the top eight for the next power ranking that we have so next in the 14th spot we've got the clear field charmander and coach jordan and i, I this 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 past week lilligant tier five representing we'll talk about the midwest mill tank but Lilligant picking up three kills against the Clearfield Charmanders. I, I think that was interesting because 
Jordan has so much speed on this team and to be able to see the the Torkoal Lily combo as a way to outspeed the speediest team in the league with solid prep very difficult for Jordan to be able to take that on because does not have a lot of bulk on that team but regardless of the fact that he took a loss uh, in week six we did bump him up the power rankings clearly standing ahead of the Chelsea Felstingers and the Kansas Kitty Kingler uh, but what do you think about that beard yeah uh, you know this was a this was an interesting matchup you know Jordan's known for breaking a lot of uh, memeage and and straight up offensive power uh, to break through those walls. But uh, you know, clearly with uh, Chris's prep and the sun support, he was able to obliterate his team. Like it, it just it worked out really well. Um, pretty unfortunate for for Jordan, but you know, I wish him luck uh, in the upcoming weeks. And uh, you know, I I still think uh, he he's got he's got some work to do and a chance to pull himself out of the hole. Yep, we will see if all that speed is going to be able to surge to the finish line as with a playoff spot. He's got a chance. The last seed, I believe, in the in that side of the bracket has a 3-3 three and three team. So uh, if I'm not – no, he's on the other side, actually. So it's, it's really going to come down to two, can he beat the top four guys. In that, uh, in that conference to sneak into the playoffs. So uh, with that being said, we'll go ahead and jump to the number 13 spot, an unlucky number for the Russellville Rockets who've dropped six spots to the 13th spot. Devastating losses to the top four teams in his conference. Things are looking shaky, but what do you think about the Ratty Blue Wizard? Well, you know, <clears throat> I think uh, the Ratty Blue Wizard here has uh, coming in with you know all the prep. He, he's got the right tools. He's bringing it to the battle, and it just seems that like you know his opponents, you know they're tough competition. They they just seem to have that one step ahead of them in his matches, and it's shown in the past couple weeks that uh, you know a lot of a lot of the top uh, tier players have been on their A game. Um, being ready to, you know, take down take down the threat, and it's it's unfortunate to, to see this is this happening because you know it's it's not really good for morale to watch these uh, these L's come through uh, as frequently as they have for Prez. Uh, but you know, I know I know Prez plays, um, and like you know his ambition, and I, I I hope he can bounce back from this. Uh, but you know it, it it's been looking a little rough for him. Yeah, and he's he's at minus two right now in the Alola Conference, two and four, right on the fringe of the playoffs. But when you look at the fact that the, I don't know if the rules were changed, but the way the rules are right now, head to head trumps differential. So in order to get into the playoffs, he's going to have to have a better record than Brandon, Squid, Matt, and Carlos, and that is no easy feat. But if anybody can do it. It's our Ratty Blue Wizard pulling some magic out of the hat and I think riding Mega Gallade to that spot. So with that said, we'll go ahead and jump to the number 12 spot. We got the Lake Erie Gyarados, a, a personal friend of yours, I believe, lives in your general uh, vicinity, if not a roommate. Uh, so tell us, all the, tell us all the things that you think about Shea being here in spot number 12. So uh, my boy, Shea man you know he he's good peeps he's good peeps that's my boy <laughs> um <laughs> uh but uh looking at uh, his matchup this week uh that was against uh refresh my memory here uh he played me so. oh he played you well um i didn't get a chance to witness that but okay well i can um, i can break down the game a little bit so so basically yeah. what it came down to yeah, he brought the Ditto, he brought the Rhyperior as a way to stop the electric hits. Um, I really didn't have much to deal with the Latios, but I was able to get comfortable and kind of sack things off to it to pressure with the Coco late game. I ended up getting a 2-0 victory, but I will say I have never worked as hard as I have in prep to counter-team a Ditto. Um, 
broke out the tech such as Surf Araquanid because I didn't have a switch to my own Araquanid. Um, <laughs> so uh, really, really <laughs> close battle came down to the end. Uh, very, very close in terms of HP. I was at uh, really low HP on the last uh, of my mods. And I think for Coach Shea, um, he's shown that he can be a top tier coach, right? Uh, he had a, I think, a 11 or 10 game winning streak in the FPL, which is a lot of the coaches that are in this league today. So I think he can turn it around. I think he knows itself he can turn it around. And he's got some, some big wins that he's had so far. He's beat Squid. Uh, so I, I think he's got a chance at uh, pushing himself up to the top eight spot. Yeah, you know, I agree with that. And now that you now that you mentioned this, okay, this is coming back to me. Uh, yeah, I remember he was like, oh, oh, man, like, Arthur's, Arthur was a scary battle. Um, and I think, uh, like, I, I, I heard him talk about the Iraq when tech, and I was yep. like, oh, wow, wow, like, all right, it's crazy to be able to prep so hard to count of all things like that so uh you know again it just shows like uh good end on uh, your part here uh shay like i know you can pull through this dude like <laughs> yep oh, yeah we, we will see and you know it's funny i'm just now realizing this um but you you were you were right here at number 11 so uh if you'd like to talk about your spot you can do that uh i think it's pretty cool that you both stayed in the, the same spot, and you're, you're right there bunched up with Chris, too. So the, the Ohio trifecta right here at 12, 11, and 10. But how are you feeling about the number 11 spot? Uh, the number 11 spot. Honestly, uh, after witnessing the battle, uh, you know, that week, uh, I, I thought I would have been a lot lower than I had anticipated. Uh, just because, I you know, it, the battle led off to a really bad start. Uh, especially with leads, you know, leads are such an important uh, factor when 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 jumping right into battle. Uh, but you know, uh, I, I'll give it to Bates. He played he played pretty well. Uh, read me like a book, and uh, you know, I, I, I try to bounce back as best as I could. Um, so that's that's kind of where I stand with that. Yeah. Well, it was it was definitely a good game to watch. I I, I felt like it was kind of up in the air to who, to who had control over that battle until later in the game where Jesse pulled ahead. But overall, really strong battle. I think you deserved the right around the 11th spot. It poised, to, poised to climb up. You've still got a lot of division battles in the Alola Conference, too, so you definitely have a chance of controlling your own destiny. So, uh, yeah, with that said, we're going to move to number 10, the Midwest Mill Tank, currently sitting and poised to make the playoffs if the season ended today. Number 10, moving up three spots. I, I'll say that I I, I kind of sleep on Sun. I've never went into a draft league and said, I have to get Sun. It's usually been, I, I'd much rather have Sand or Rain, but never Sun. And, and to see Chris form this team as a rookie in the LDL, which is one of the more competitive leagues I've ever been in, he has he's been sparkling and just absolutely shining with the prep and uh i mean just hats hats go off lilligant getting three kills amazing so uh what do, what do you think uh you know my 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 boy chris uh <laughs> the ruby uh he uh he brought the heat i ain't yeah. gonna lie spicy. and he's spicy and <laughs> you know, he's like, oh my god, like I have no idea what I'm getting myself into here. Joining this draft league, it's a little scary. And I was like, dude, you're fine. Like, we got this. Uh, he, he, uh, he was, he was really uh, unsure how his team operated. And I was like, well, hey, here's a couple of ideas for you. And you know, after that, I mean, he's picked it up and 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 taken off with it. And I'm I'm really impressed. I was like, oh god, here we go. It's gonna be another one of those seasons where I bring a new play, uh, a new player into the league, and they just, you know, excel. Uh, actually, speaking of which, uh, you know, Shay was uh, one of the first, well, was one of the other persons that um, I ended up inviting into L, uh, into TLTPG uh, to jump in, you know, on the competitive scene, and you know, it showed with that F, uh, with that FPL league, uh, you know, how quickly that got on. Uh, but I'm, I'm really I'm really rooting for Chris here. Um, I also battle him uh, here in week seven. So uh, best believe I'm going to be bringing the heat uh, to get him uh, 
settles be squared away. So, uh, <laughs> on that note, uh, yeah, I guess we'll jump. I mean, I, I think we're all interested to see how it plays out between the three of you. Who has, who has the better record and who has bragging rights? Because there's a little bit extra on the line between the three of you. So that, that, that's pretty oh, cool yeah. to watch. And so with that said, going to number nine, just a tick outside of the top eight. We've got the Outback Kamala moving up a spot to number nine. Jesse, so close, ever so close to being in that playoff race. He's got a three and three record along with coach Brennan and coach Chris. He's at a slightly less differ differential. He's got a minus two differential as opposed to Brennan. Who's got a zero Chris. who has got the two. So if it ended today, he'd be on the outside of the playoffs, but he's, he's, he's on a good roll. I believe he's won two games in a row and I hate to rub salt in the wounds beer, but he, he was able to beat you and the Lakewood Trevenants this week and move up to the spot. Overall, things are going well for him. I've liked what he's done to his roster so far to shift some pieces around. He's still got a lot of bulk, but got a little bit more offensive pressure. So what do you think about the the man from the land down under Jet and 99 at the ninth spot? Well, you know, I, I to uh, Jesse this week. Uh, he, he played really well. Uh, you know, I, I brought I brought stuff to, to take care of him, but it just, like I said, the leads was the most important thing, and he brought the right bulk to be able to 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 cover his ground. So, I mean, I give him props to that. Um, hands off. Um, and you know, just his just his reads, he did he did really well, and and like I, I think it's it's really deserving where he's at. So, uh, <laughs> awesome. He, yeah. yeah, I think this is a pretty solid, solid group here. Lots of talent, lots of guys who are on the fringe of being able to boost their way to the next slide. Oh, look at that! Look at that transition. The next slide, <laughs> which is our oh. number one through eight. Yeah, I, I rock the PowerPoint basically. So, <laughs> with that being said, we've got the number eight team, Salt Lake City Swampers, moving up one spot. Coach Brennan, Thumb Brother Two. What do you think about him being at number eight? Number eight. Well, you know, I will say that uh, Brennan has been uh, making his comeback. Uh, I know he had uh, lost a couple of weeks uh, looking back here, uh, but he's he's rocking that. Uh, what is it? The three and three record. Three and three record. Yeah. And uh, you know, a little bit of a rough start, but like he's 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 bounced back, and he, like I said, he's got a really awesome team. Uh, looking at this dynamic. Uh, and, uh, you know, he played really well against, uh, against Mark, uh, for week six. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't expect that outcome. I don't think any of us were expecting because, you know, you got two, two LDL champs going at it. So it could be anyone's game. Yeah. Um, that's, that's going to be a heck of a battle. And I, I would say that for Brennan, really, he's shown a history of slow starts, whether that's just getting used to the team or getting adjusted he hasn't made any roster moves, but he's definitely got better each week. I think with that just comes with the comfort level that he's had with this team when it comes to building and knowing what tools he has and what he has to bring in he, bring each week to be successful. So especially with a nine tails and a Charizard, he's got to prioritize around rocks too. And I think he's got the tools to do that with the scissor, with the Rotom. And even though if the season ended today, he would not be in the playoffs. I think he's poised to make a deep run later in the season like he has he's i believe one of two coaches that has made playoffs every single time he's been in ldl so i think number eight is a good spot for him at number seven though we have the moon moon valley mewtwo dropping two spots despite their win but still sitting pretty at number seven commanding a lot of respect coach brandon and he's been consistent all season he's got a very strong fairy dragon steel core that has come to every game i believe but i don't blame him because it's so so powerful what do you think of the moon valley mewtwo that's kind of hard to say i don't know if that's just me uh <laughs> at the number seven spot well you know uh i think uh brandon has a very powerful team uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good synergy with his, with his cores, like you mentioned, um, and uh, he he's, he's just really impeccable at making the reads in in battle when they matter most. Uh, and I will say that is a, a very admirable 
skill that he has there uh, to be able to do that. And uh, like you've mentioned, you know, it's been a pretty consistent season. And uh, and I, I I really look forward to seeing what happens. Uh, the the match that uh, that he had this week, which was versus DJ, another one of those uh, very close matches, very close. You know, and it, it was it was it was remarkable that it came down to uh, you know his his prep with the scarf uh, at the very end for the Archeops to cover the rest of DJ's team. But you know, it looked like it it looked like uh, DJ had him had him uh, wrapped around his finger pretty well. Uh, but you know, like I said, that that extra insurance policy uh, of having that scarf on his team uh, for week six uh, let him seal the deal with that W. Yeah, and I believe the biggest weakness Brandon had going into this season was Articuno was the only way that he was going to get hazards off the field. And ever since he added Mega Sableye to the team with that magic bounce pressure, I think it's really changed the dynamic of his team and made him a lot more scary. And so definitely deserving of a number seven spot here in the power rankings. Number six, though, we've got the defending champion himself, the Arizona Volcarona, Coach Mark, staying sitting pretty at that number six spot despite taking a loss goes to show you kind of the just the the i guess the prowess of the the defending champion staying power here despite taking a loss still one of the top six coaches this season and he's he's basically just been at the mercy of crits i i the games that he's won he's got crits that have gone his way some of the games he's lost it's been because he got a critical hit on his side and that's why thumb brother two is sitting at number eight because he was able to best mark this week what do you think about mark staying at the number six spot well you know uh i think that's a pretty fair judgment uh in in that in that decision to put him at uh spot six uh you know mark's got a really a really staying power team like I mean, you can bring what you bring, and you know you're gonna be putting in the work. Uh, and he's known for he's known for that. He's got a lot of good setup sweeping potential, and the right support where it matters most. And you know it makes it hard because you you can emphasize on focusing on one thing on his team, but then you end up leaving something else out, and sometimes that can cost you the game. Yep. Um, yeah, hyper so. offense, it's definitely a double-edged sword. It's a very powerful sword, but double-edged nonetheless because you trade all of, a lot of that offensive pressure for not so much bulk, and so mistakes are magnified when they happen. So critical hits hurt almost twice as bad, but he, he's, he's comfortable with this play style. It's led to a championship, so who am I to, to question it? So it's sitting pretty at number six, and... We got a. I, I do want to throw some shameless PR. Week eight coming up, I will get to battle him, so I'm pretty pretty hyped for that battle. Uh, oh man! At the number five spot though, and I know this is big for big for him, getting himself into the top five. He's got something to prove this season. We've got Anthony in the Victorville Victini after a one hell of a performance. The 6-0 with a curse muck. Victorville Victini. Oh my goodness. The the muck just put in so much work this week and got him in the top five spot. He's sitting pretty at four and two. What do you think about uh, Coach Anthony? Uh, you know, Coach Anthony, he's made very distinctive transactions this season uh, to balance out his team. Uh, I'm actually really impressed with the synergy he has uh, now, and especially with the right bulk and support that he has from his mons. Uh, you know, it, it's a it's a threatening team and you know, you know, you're gonna have a good battle when you go up against um, And uh, I will say he he definitely knows how to play the Star War and uh, <laughs> it, it it shows, you know, if you let him get a little too carried away with those uh, with the stall set up, you know You're in for some trouble and this week this week, you know, unfortunately Trig happens to fall mm -hmm. uh, victim to that so yeah, uh, nothing, yeah you nothing know. to be ashamed of there that that muck's gonna give a lot of teams problems even if they know it's coming now that is a very tough set to deal with and so yeah Absolutely. Muck, muck being muck establishing itself in a threat at the pretty much the midway point of the season making the victorville victini one of the top five teams to look out for here in ldl season seven now we've got number four the toronto totodile 
your favorite, everyone's favorite, Team team Not Squid, Team Squid, whatever team you're on. We've got the Toronto Total Dial here. After a very, very, very close game between the Winnipeg Jellicent, which we will get into a bit later, but uh, it did not move in the power rankings. I think that's it's pretty accurate. He's established himself as a top four team and has really fluctuated everywhere between the number one spot and the four spot. He's got a really strong team. Prep is good week in and week out. I think the the battle with Matt this week, just two two former champions going at it, very high caliber battle. Mark or Matt coming out on top is why is why Squid is here at the number four spot and Matt's at the number three spot. But what do you think about the Blazing Squid so far uh, this season? You know the Blazing Squid. Uh, you know <laughs> I got I gotta drop it in there the freeze hacks this season uh <laughs> you know uh he he's uh he, he's got that team and you know he he knows exactly what he's doing every week he comes uh he comes into battle and uh you know and it shows it shows with his performance and his record um but you know again just this week with the battle that occurred uh he just fell just just a tad bit short uh with uh his with his uh, calculations and uh you know it, it's it, it's it's still it's still a, um anyone's game at the top four slot here or top four slots for playoffs and uh you know i'm i'm looking forward to seeing these these upcoming matches Squid's matches are uh very entertaining yeah, and uh, yeah. informational yeah very so. entertaining he does a great job commentating and i think we're all if you're not, I mean, you need to wake up. But everybody is hyped for the Carlos Blazing Squid battle this week, and if you're if you're if you're underexcited for that, they have to basically like deal with the salt of who's gonna lose that game on their PRs next week. So be sure to tune in to the battle and the PRs next week, uh, which should be very exciting. So uh, with that said, we've got the number three team, the Winnipeg Jellicent and Coach Matt. Dropping one spot despite the win, I think that's more of a testament to Carlos's consistency this season, which we will talk about in just a moment. But Coach Matt getting a huge victory off the season one champ for LDL, the Blazing Squid. He had really good prep. I think he made the right plays despite getting frozen for what seemed like half the battle. Uh, he was able to come out on top and get the victory, and Koma-O at the very last second clutching it out. What do you think about Coach Matt at the number three spot? You know, I will say Matt pulling through, Matt pulling through the right tech, uh, you know, bringing it, bringing it to, bringing the heat to the squid. You know, it can make some, make a little calamari going on here. Uh, yeah, it was, it was really, it was really toasty with that prep, and you know, I was impressed just watching it all unfold. Uh, and uh, you know, again that. Uh, I think he said something like 14 turns of freeze on the on the Raikou, uh, which was unfortunate. But you know, it really well actually, like... I think when I talked to him, he said 63 turns of freeze. So I think each time you ask him, it jumps up uh, by a multiplier of two. So by the next time oh. we ask, it'll be 120 turns of freeze that he had to deal with that game. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh but you know he he uh i, I think at the very end it, it played on to uh a bit of the rng uh with the crits and the paralysis but you know he he pulled that win off and uh it was it, you know it's 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 pretty reasonable for him to be where he's at so yeah, just there there was there was a little bit of hacks in that game but i felt like the Arceus, the power of Arceus, balanced out the hacks and decided the winner at the very last turn, which was a really great battle. Be sure to watch that if you have not already. That's why Matt's in the three spot. And now as we move up the ladder, we're getting close, guys. The number two spot, the Des Moines Darmanitan. Coach Carlos moving up a spot to the number two spot. One of the five and one teams. And he's had a heck of a season coming off a, a really just haxy battle with uh with mark a couple weeks ago or else he could be undefeated he's got a really powerful team at the two spot i like the fact that he's picked up mill tank as an additional stealth rocker on his team and we're gonna see next week if he can climb to the number one spot i would imagine if he beats 
the Blazing Squid next week, he gets a spot at number one. We've got Coach Carlos at number two. What are you thinking about him so far this season? You know, I will say, Car, you're you're absolutely on point there with Carlos. He is such a consistent and uh, unpredictable player because uh, he 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 knows what he's doing. Uh, his his draft was strong this season, and uh, you know it it really shows uh, in in each of his battles that he that he's brought every single week that uh, you know he knows how to play the field. Uh, to his advantage and take, um, you know, take those, those major plays where it counts. Um, and it's really impressive. Um, I will say that. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. He's definitely on that top tier um, section of, 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 the, of the league here. So, yeah, if you if, if I haven't said it enough. The Blazing Squid, number four, former LDL champion. I th- believe he won. Yeah, it was it was RU, right? The it wasn't NU, but it was RU the off season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is the RU LDL champion. We've got Carlos, one season two of FPL. I've been in him in a number of leagues with him. He's always competitive, always at the top. That is going to be a hype battle, and. Yeah, oh, God, can't wait for that. But without further ado, uh, the number one spot um, uh, is myself, uh, the Birmingham Aerons. Uh, I think, really, you could make a case for Carlos being number one. The only thing that's a little bit different is I have a uh, five-game winning streak. He has a three-game, but he beat me earlier in the season. So definitely a case for him to be in the number one spot and me be two. But I'm sitting up here now, um, and I think, uh, for me, the, the key so far has been making really – um, safe reads and not trying to get ahead of myself and kind of building around that to where I can have a little bit bulkier team and be able to pivot around it. So uh, I'll let you, I'll let you say some words too. Y- yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I will, I think it's deserving where it's at. Uh, you have some really powerful cores um, and with the right support and trades uh, that you've made so far this season, um, it, the, the the team is looking extra crispy, and uh, yeah, yeah, some <laughs> golden fried church's chicken, <laughs> extra crispy. I, I mean, you got the cocoa sitting on the squad, that's man. That's true. That's true. That's true. I'm going to change that to churches now. So if you watch the PR and you're wondering my, why my cocoa is now going to be forever named churches, you heard it here first. The beard. There you go. Name. Yeah, I, if I can say anything about this week, I got to use Hitman Top for the first time. That was pretty pimp. Uh, ran a uh, banded set, and yeah, it was uh, it's pretty awesome. A fun battle with uh, Coach Coach Shea. So without yeah, that is our that is our top 16 guys. Hope you enjoyed the power rankings and staying with us right at about the 30 minute mark. But before we leave you, let's go ahead and talk about the battle of the week and who is going to take that home. I mean, I don't think it was any shocker if you watched all the battles. You probably came up with this one as the battle of the week. I mean, what were your? What, we already talked about the battle a little bit. I'll just say this: that came comes down to the final turn. We already spoiled it, but it was an amazing battle. Both amazing prep on both sides. Two, uh, two, two really quality battlers too. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, their prep was impeccable, and and I mean, it just showed in the battle. It, it literally could have gone anyone's way. Uh, but, you know, again, with the RNG hacks and everything, uh, you know, someone ended up pulling through. And, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely worth checking out, guys. Uh, you know, like the channel, support them, all yes. that stuff. Yes, exactly. So that's going to do it for us. The the Lazy Ghost, Beard himself, Mark, he was here spiritually. And we hope you join us next week for a very special power ranking. Hopefully, hopefully filled with so much rage and animosity because they want to just, just, I don't know, just fisticuffs next week because of the intense battle that they had here in uh, week seven, Coach Carlos and Coach Blazing Squid. But that's going to be it all for us. Uh, this is the Lazy Ghost saying goodbye. Beard, I'll let you take us home. Yep. Beard out. Thanks for joining us, guys. And uh, we'll be glad to have you uh, check out the next video. All right.